Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison. We'll be talking sports and life. We got my main man, NFLer, Nate mm-hmm. Gillum. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good, Travis. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, man. How's everything going? I know you guys are in training right now, right? We are. Yeah, yeah. I literally just got out of meetings uh, not too long ago. But yeah, we're uh, working out, training, hitting the field, doing some field work, and then some meetings after that. So. Okay, how long y'all? How long y'all been doing that so far? Y'all been pretty. Yeah, it's been a few weeks now, right? Yeah, it has. It's been since uh, I would say April, like mid April, like April eighteenth, I think nineteenth. Okay, was, was our first day back. So. Okay, man, yeah, that yeah. that season, that season pick up right back right after the season. Then, man, like how 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 long do you guys really have off? Like right after the season ends. You have off honestly pretty. I would say it's decent. I mean, you have off from about I would say. As soon as that season ends, whether that's in January or February, right. um, if you go all the way, uh, all the way till really April. So you, the months you kind of control what you do with your time okay. from the months of basically beginning of February, all the way to about mid April, early April, if they have a new head coach come in and all that. So right, yeah. okay, okay. From Knoxville, Tennessee, man. So how how was it living there? We actually played at Merlin, and, and we had a. Our uh, NCAA tournament was in Nashville, though. It was in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville. Um, so that was the only time I ever been there, man. But I, I heard it's, 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 a, it's a great place to live, man. It is. It's, it is. It's just a lot of good people. I, I, yeah. I, like, I've come across, yeah. Um, just not too busy. Like, I used to live in L.A. Uh, last year. That's just a whole uh, different right. out there. So. <laughs> right. It, it's nice coming from Knoxville, just your your roots, wherever you come from. It, it's that's that's what home is to you. But I always absolutely, moving. absolutely. So how how did you start playing football, man? When did that start for you, man? Like for me, for example, I started playing basketball because I had two older brothers. They played, and I, I I wanted to be like my older brother. So you know, my mom wanted to see if I wanted to try it out, and one thing led to another. What's your mm-hmm. story? So I have two older brothers as well. Uh-huh. So uh, they. My oldest, we all played football growing up. Uh, okay. What was cool about, about me is I started pretty early on because I had older brothers. And my middle brother, who's like, I'm a year and a half apart from him, mm-hmm. we would actually play on the same team oh, wow. um, starting after my first year. My first year, I was on like on my own team. I think I started like eight years old, nine years old, I think eight oh. years old. And then I started playing up a year with him, okay. which was pretty tough. Um, it just, it was good that I was a, more so of a bigger kid. I wasn't the biggest. It's funny growing up, you'd think I would be the biggest kid on every team, but I, there was guys older than me that, that was just bigger every, every year. Until <laughs> right. Freshman, sophomore year of high school. Yeah. Did, did you and your brother always compete? Like me and my brothers, right? Like my oldest brother is nine years older than I am. My other, the next one up is six years older than I am. So when I used to go to the court basketball court with them, yeah. they used to rough me up all the time, push me around and things like that. I and mean, eventually I got taller than both of them. And then I started beating up on them. <laughs> but so how was that like growing up with, with your brothers, man? You all guys are playing football all together. Exactly. Exactly. My, uh, the middle brother who I'm, let's see, I'm a year and a half, uh, difference. He, uh, him and I would always, would always go at it. We would always wrestle in the house and stuff. Um, but in football, he was obviously more of a faster guy. He played at a very young age. He was peewee. We, he would play running back. He'd be the scoring the touchdowns. I'd still be a lineman. Um, but as time kind of went on, it was like right when I hit middle school is when when he played in his own age group or his grade. I would say for right. seventh grade, I was mm-hmm. on my own team by then, seventh grade. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. But me and him like went to school very close to him. Yeah. Uh, he's actually my financial advisor now, which is like pretty wow. such that's a cool relationship. Stuff. So. Yeah. That's really cool. And then my oldest brother, who's five years older than me, he's the one that played at University of Tennessee. Um, okay. We never obviously got to play football together. Not even uh, a chance uh, going into college. He was leaving college as I was going in. You know, right. And, uh, he was the guy that would come home and always rough rough me up. <laughs> he, he made sure I had, had to be tough for football and just prepared right. me for, for life. Of, of course, man. And how your brothers did for you, man, did the same for me. Like, they never took it easy on me. Always yeah. gave me a hard time. Even when I wanted to just go to the court, they shooting around. Can I see the ball? No, we got to take it. They made me work for everything. And then, like you said, it developed it, – it, what it did for me, 
like it prepared me for my career and, and things I didn't always related back to those experiences that which helped me throughout my experience and throughout my career. Exactly. Exactly. You learned, you learned a lot <laughs> when, <laughs> when nothing's given and you have to go out there and fight for it because you have to show you the show way. So. Absolutely. So, so what made, what, what age when you was like football, that's what I want to do. This is, this is, I want to take it up to the next level. I want to pursue this thing full time. I'll, I'll, I'll jump back to when I was younger. Obviously, I, I love basketball football. Those are my two favorite sports. Okay, okay. Uh, really, really enjoyed basketball. Um, clearly, at, I was like middle school when I realized, okay, maybe maybe there's something here. Like, I love football just because right. it's a more physical sport than than really than most, uh, more physical than basketball. Those are the two sports right. I was playing. I didn't play any other sport, um, except when I was younger, I played a little bit of soccer. But it, wasn't, it really wasn't until – freshman year of high school when I oh, wow. after after I hit a growth spurt because in eighth grade I really I wasn't the tallest guy I wasn't the biggest guy but freshman year I, I hit a growth spurt and my brother who was uh eight my my eighth grade year it was his senior year in high school mm-hmm. and he was looking to play college he ended up walking on at Tennessee and like I was like dang I kind of want to be like him <laughs> like he right, like, right. <laughs> he was cool and so you looked up to him and after he left high school, I came in, um, and I was like, "Yeah, I got, I got to get to that level because <laughs> right, we right. always go back and forth." Um, when I was in college, and he was out of college, like who was a better player, or whatever. Right. But it was, it was really, it was really right when I got to high school. I kind of, t- I took a, I took football very seriously. I, I actually stopped playing basketball right when I came to high school and just focused on football. If that tells football. you. So. Okay, would would you were you good in are you were you good in basketball? I know a lot I know a lot of football players that ain't good in basketball. Were you good in sure, basketball? Sure, sure. I was all right. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know if I was good as you or your brothers, but um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I I, uh, I feel like I'm I'm pretty athletic. I I picked it up. Right. Well, I actually my junior year of high school only played one year of of, of high school basketball. I came back because I, I missed I missed it that much. I missed it. And I only played that one, one junior year, but then I actually had to stop playing. I couldn't play it my senior year because I I focused on it. At that point, I was already going to play – or going to go play football in college. So right. really in high school, the football – the focus was football. And right. I wasn't very – in my opinion, my heart, I'm hard on myself, clearly. Hardest critic. Yeah. And – it didn't really it didn't really hit me until sophomore year of high school that I was like, okay, maybe I could play this in college. And I, and then I went after it. And then yeah, my so, brother so I, Right. So how how was your high school career I mean experience in regards to football? Like just that whole process, because obviously over years, over time, you develop, you, you learn more, your experiences more, and now you know things are starting to pick up, you know, you're starting to get recruited. Now college coaches are coming, now it's it's becoming real. So what was yeah. that experience like for you? What was that whole high school experience like for you? Of course, it was good. I uh, we're we're pretty big high school. We're like I think we're six A was the division, and yeah. I think that was the highest division in Tennessee at the time. Um, so it was my my freshman year. I just played freshman ball, or I played sorry freshman and JV ball. Then sophomore year, um, competed and like I earned a starting spot. At, it was actually the second game. It was a, it was a, after the first game we kind of split reps. The second game I ended up starting, um, and then. Really, it was after my sophomore year. Put put some tape together, right? That's what you gotta do. Back in the day, yeah. like huddle, you gotta you gotta put your own tape and guys <laughs> with music or whatever. I just right. kept it, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, just solid f- football and just focused on fundamentals. And think about that. I'll be honest. I, w- I was very blessed. Like I had an older brother who was in college, and so right. he showed me a lot. Like he showed me. I was a very nice guy growing up and stuff. I had to learn when you step on that field, it, it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Like, right. Right. You got to turn something on it or, right. or, or it's always on for some, some people or not or vice right. versa. And you become, you become a different player as the years go on. And so my sophomore year, after my sophomore year, went to some camps. That's when I did well at camps. Um, I got notice and going in my junior year, have a great junior year. And that's when the after after my junior right after my junior year, um, I went to or I got it was actually yeah right after my junior year. This is a funny story. My first official offer was from the University of Kentucky, and actually I was there uh, seeing my brother play 
because they played Tennessee at the time. Wow. And I was like, got it, just got an offer <laughs> right before the game, but also rooting for Tennessee because my brother was. <laughs> it was a pretty funny, pretty interesting. Right. 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 So, hey, so how how was that getting your first offer? What what did that feel like? Because like I said, you. You just really fell in love with, or really thought, told yourself you wanted to play in ninth, tenth grade. Now, like you say, it's, it's it's becoming real. Now you're getting offers now. That's when the eyes opened and was like, "Oh wait, this is happening." Kind of a you want something, you have a goal, then that goal is achieved. Now you're like, okay, like this is for real. You know, right. you know, a college coach said, you know, we want to offer you full scholarship here. And that's when things obviously opened up like anybody that goes to recruiting, it's, it's a long process. Personally, there's just a lot to recruiting. It's very taxing. It's very busy. Um, coach is always pulling on you, whatever. That's right. That's that, that moment. I still remember that moment. They're walking off pregame and the head coach like came over real quick and like told me, and I was like, I didn't, didn't, didn't feel real. Then I right. got by myself and realized that just very grateful because this is something I've always always wanted to do, really. Absolutely, you know. absolutely, absolutely. And <clears throat> what was um, what was that recruit? I know you say it was ta- it, it could be the tax and that that that, that recruit that recruiting process. What was it like for you? Because I know for for me, it was very taxing, like you said, and we had to go through a lot and deal with a lot, like a lot of coaches and mm-hmm. um, play, they they reaching out to your family members, your mom, your 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 relatives, you know, anybody they, they can get their hands on to, they reach out. And like you said, it's, and then you go to camps and they just everywhere, they everywhere. They ask all your games. Like it's, 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 exactly. it's, a grueling, it's a grueling, it's a grueling process. It is. It is. And they, they, they would come to practices and like, and it just became a lot because you're, it's almost like you're dating a bunch of, they, they say it's like <laughs> you related to dating. You're dating a bunch of girls at the same time. It just didn't feel yeah. right. Cause you're like, wait, uh, which team I got to focus on. So you get it, you narrow it down. Of course, you're, you're young. You've got, I'll be, I'll be honest, uh, let my pride down. Like, you know, you get, have, you get kind of a big head or, or you, some kids can let that happen. We got to realize like what got you here. It was the hard work you put in. That's Absolutely. what got you. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I enjoyed, I enjoyed most of it, but there, there were, there were parts that was, it, it became a lot. Right. Absolutely. And, like like you said, it's um, like you said, you can because, like you said, everybody wants you. Everybody, so like you said, it does something to your, your ego and pride. Like then you got, you know, like I had mentors, I had people in my ear, like you know, this person saying this, this person saying that, NBA teams saying this, this and that, and it's like, and as a young, as a young student, as a young kid, as a kid, you you yeah. don't know how to process all this because of this is your first time you actually experiencing yourself, and you get put in all different, and it can be taxing on the brain. Mitchell. For, sure. for sure it was it was for me at least uh, uh, other people can go d- d- differently I wasn't a four or five stars I mean I was a three star but it was just you had you had all these coaches telling you one thing but did you, you gotta figure out what's the best fit for you and, and just your situation so. absolutely and and so what made you choose Wake Forest? What, what, yeah. what, like, what, what, what schools, what five schools or what schools were you considering it? And then why did you choose Wake Forest? Yeah, it, it really came down to, really came down to Kentucky just because they were loyal, loyal at first. Uh, it really came down to Kentucky, Mississippi State, um, and of course, Wake Forest. And I wanted to go somewhere because my brother, again, another insight, he got to see how they, they, We'll recruit guys and then like figure out, oh, okay, like how they're gonna treat you when you get there. Because it's it's Absolutely. obviously different. Obviously different. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I know I know it's a game. I get it. Coaches gotta obviously get the best players, whatever. I chose Wake Forest for really two main reasons. And the third reason my dad reminded me of, I'll get to that. The first reason was just the opportunity to play early, I felt like. Um, not because of of the talent there just because of the coach, I felt like I really, I was like, if anybody goes to recruiting, they hear this, like, you're, you want to be the number one guy. You want to be the number Absolutely. one guy. Like you want to be that guy. Like, so Absolutely. when they get you, they're, they're going to build everything around you. Like Absolutely. If you match up to the talent that they obviously want. If you're a third, fourth guy that I felt like other schools, like, could I, you know, could I have gone to, you know, I'm from Knoxville. So it's like SEC country. 
And right. like they thought like, oh, a lot of people thought, oh, you're going to go to Tennessee, whatever. But like, you know, I wanted to go somewhere. I don't know. My whole family went to Tennessee. So I wanted to do something mm-hmm. different. I just feel like that's mm-hmm. always unique. Right. Um, but it really came down to the two main things. Wanted to play early and just because, and they wanted me. I would I mean, they recruited me more than any other school did. Right. And I felt like, and I, and I could have those conversations in person with those coaches and it felt genuine. And the third right. thing obviously mm-hmm. was my dad reminded me, it was just that the academics, the education was absolutely the best out of my options. <clears throat> it was absolutely. by far. <clears throat> and, that, and that's great. And that's, and that's key too. And, you know, that definitely hats off to, to your dad, man, you know, because that's, you know, a lot of people think, of course, <clears throat> when you're young, you're like, I can play forever. I'm not going to get hurt. Everything will be fine. But God, God forbid you get hurt, you know, you get, right. what's your plan B, what's your backup plan? So that's definitely hats off to your dad for that. For sure. um, so what, 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 so what advice would you give a young high schooler that's in high school, just trying to pursue college or, you know, even through that whole recruiting process of choosing the right school. So like you said, it's not a lot of times, a lot of kids choose the name of the school and, and they get caught up in the, they get caught up in that and they yep. lose out on opportunities. Whereas, what's the best fit for me and where can I play right away and, and, and what's going to highlight my skills and, you know, things like that. So what kind of advice would you give? You clearly control, control what you can control. And so if a school is coming after you hard, a little, and even if it's just a little bit harder than the other school, there's something to it, you know, like put, put some value on that. Right. So my advice would just be, you know, figure out who's, who's more genuine, who, who's figured out who really, really, really wants you. What are they saying? What kind of conversations are you having with coaches? Make sure you ask questions. And at a young age, it's hard to ask questions. because, like, you're, say you visit Alabama, it's Nick Saban. You're just big eyes. Like, Oh my gosh, that's Nick Saban or whatever. Absolutely. And, of, and, and, you know, say it's another school um, in the ACC, you know, it's, it's Florida state or whatever, just that name, the tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, I also, another reason is like, I went to Wake was because I felt like something was special about to happen. So get to know your, the other, other guys and like, who, who else, who else are they recruiting? Figure right. out also who else are they bringing in on your position? That's what I had to figure out mm-hmm. as well. What's important. And just to see who's coming in and who you're going to be competing against and just figure out, just ask questions. That's probably my biggest thing is ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Absolutely, man. That's, that's definitely uh, great advice. And I, I agree, you know, going through my experiences and, yeah. you know, things that I didn't know and I didn't, I found out late and too late and that whole thing. And, and now like what I, you know, get back and, and talk to the kids and say, look, this is my experience. Don't make the same mistakes I've made. Don't go through what I went through. I mean, you're going to go through your know, ups and downs. That's just, you just know if you can't get around that. That's just life. But just try to avoid it as least as amount of those as possible. Of course, of course. <laughs> what, what what was your and now you're at Wake Forest? Mm-hmm. What was that transition like from you from high school to college football? Because obviously bigger guys, they, it's, it's 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 different. It's different, you know. So yeah. what was that transition like from you and when you first stepped on campus and went through your first practice? What was that like for you? <laughs> I had to personally, my experience. I get there, I'm excited. Um, I had a lot of growing up to do um, really in my, my freshman year. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they tell you early on, either you're going to red shirt or not. Usually as an old lineman in that position, because it's such a technical position mm-hmm. and mentally you got to know a lot. Um, right. Usually they red shirt unless obviously if you're, if you're, if you're gifted and special and you can pick up the offense quick, right. and it, every offense is different learning, but usually you red shirt. So I red shirted and I kind of took it. Personally, I, t- I took it um, – I didn't handle the, the right way. I almost I almost looked as, oh, this is just an extra year. Like, I can go enjoy college or whatever and get to know a lot of people, whatever. And so when I got there, I had to grow up a lot and realize, like, this is college football. Like, this is right. – you have a lot of people counting on you. You have a lot of resp- responsibilities. Mm-hmm. The school is hard. You got to take – it really just got to take care of your business every day. Right. Right, and, right. And become a professional. There was a coach um, there that that really one of the main reasons my position coach, uh, my head coach, and then one other coach was his name was Coach Beelan, um, and he told me be an All American in everything you do, not just on the field. Wow, off wow. the field. And 
he he just he helped me a lot and I, I had to grow up and once I did um I had to figure out time management had to had to figure out what 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 were my weaknesses and, and focus on those and get those better so I could put myself in a in a successful or put myself in a great opportunity to be successful right and man that's that's definitely I wish I would have had that mindset when I was in college <laughs> you know because you know for, for, for me it was coming from high school to college you know like I was an all-american in high school coming to college I played at home in Maryland so I didn't really know what to expect how to handle that type of you don't know you don't know until you're there and it's nobody can prepare you they just won a national championship Jeez. and so it's so much it, it was it was it was but me being young-minded and not really understanding the position I'm in, I'm walking around and acting as if I'm just everybody else. I'm just every other student. I'm just, so I'm out, like you say, it's just, it's party time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I start saying like what college parties look like and, and the, the access you have, being right. who you are. And I, I tell people all the time, I got caught up in a whirlwind. I got caught up in a whirlwind and I didn't know how to get out because it was, it's engulfing, man. And people, and if you don't, if you don't know and you don't understand, then it's you just have to go through it because it's it's that spotlight is different, man. <laughs> you know, what I mean? and different. some and some and some people don't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to handle it, and I got caught up in that whirlwind, and it was just like I didn't I didn't have a chance. There would be moments when I'd be like, you know what, I gotta get right. I gotta I gotta focus. Like I came here, I'm trying to get to the NBA. This is my goal. This is my dream. And then I'll be good for like a day or two. And then I'm right back off to having fun. So it was, it was that, that I can, I, I never really found that true balance. I had it here and there. I was up and down all the time, but for, for you to do that. And that's why you are, that's why you are where you are now, but you had the, like you said, that was great advice that your coach gave you in regards to be an all American in everything you do, not just on the field, but off the field as well. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it, it's a lot of responsibility and it, it, you, when you, when you get, think about that, it's already, already a lot of responsibility in college and then it's more responsibility in, in the NFL um, because now it's really your career. It's your job. It's your livelihood. Um, Absolutely. But I, I learned a lot from, from going to Wake Forest. I'm very, so, so thankful I went. What, what was, what was some of your greatest experiences when you was at Wake Forest? Like what was a game or a play or a moment you was like, man, you, and people ask you, I'm pretty sure you get that question. Like, what was one game or one situation you was like, man, I, I never forget this moment or. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, a lot of players, a lot of my teammates would, would be on the same page or similar page. We, we traveled, uh, we we're on the road at, at NC state. Um, and we were just super big underdogs. I think they were number 19 team in the country. Um, we were up and down that year. Um, I think, yeah, we were fighting for a bowl game, just fighting back and forth. And we come to the game and nobody expects us to win. And like that really, especially coming from Wake Forest, it's a smaller school. That mm -hmm. stuff fuels us, man. Like right. we, we, hit, we truly, we had some dogs on our team and, and we, we, we played so well together. Like it wasn't, nobody was super, super really selfish or, or right. about themselves. And we came in, into their place and, and we won off of like our last uh, play with our tight end. And wow. our receiver says like, still, you know, he meant to, he kind of ran into the corner and like the tight ends guy uh, that was guarding him, yeah. like uh, his name's Bachman. He said, you know, he did that on purpose, but it, it looked like obviously an accident and then tight end was, was free down the seam touchdown that sealed wow. the game. It, it was wow. just an unreal game. It was obviously a close game the entire way. And nobody, nobody thought we were going to win that game. And, right. and we did. So that was, that was a big one. <clears throat> always remember. Wow, man. Yeah, man. Those, those, a lot of, a lot of times, even now when I, I have a group chat with some of my former teammates and, you know, we always saw people, it was a lot of times when we go through that college experience, like for me, I tell, I, I tell everybody, it was like a hazy, fuzzy moment for me because it happened kind of fast. But you you you're kind of in it, so you just kind of just moving, going through the motion. It's not till you out of that element when you look back and say, or oh, people come up to you, or alumni or boosters that come up to you and say, "Oh, we remember this game, we remember this moment." I guess you know. So, and like you said, like we had a moment when we went into the NC ACC tournament on a bubble, 
our sophomore year, we was all sophomores and freshmen and one senior. And like, nobody's expecting us to do anything. We on a bubble and we're not gonna make the tournament. And we go in and we beat Chris Paul's uh, Wake Forest, Wake Forest wow. team. I'm sorry, I'm not, not bad. You're good. No, no, say it. <laughs> hey, Chris, 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 Chris Paul, Wake Forest team. So now they're like, okay, they have a chance. We go into NC State, we go play NC State. We're down 20 at the half. Everybody's leaving, everybody's leaving. And then we just come back and win that game. Now wow. we got Duke, who's the number one seed, and we go to double overtime and win that and win the whole ACC tournament. So it was like the first, the first, wow. the first time Merlin won the ACC tournament in 20 years. And that was like the biggest turn the weekend they say of ACC tournament. But that's those type of moments that get brought up all the time. And then you don't really understand the moment until years later, you look back and people are still talking about it. Exactly. Exactly. Those those experiences. So like you said, and then then and then what those experiences do for us is it helped us throughout life too, because we think about those moments when things are not looking good and things are not looking bright or we're down and going through adversity. They just think about those moments when nobody expected you to come back and win and then you come back and you defeat it, you know? Everyone remembers those moments. Yeah, absolutely. So so so, ne- so now you, 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 you had a, a, a very good college football career. Now you're getting ready for what you always hope to drink. So when did that when did that part become real for you in regards to like this this is this is yeah it's about to, this is about to be something big so like I'm it was real quick yeah it was my senior year and I I live with two guys I they're you know <laughs> I'm super tight with now we we talk about it all the time um one was a linebacker one was a receiver and it was really after I I. I started as really I started the whole season my redshirt junior year um, at tackle, and started hearing like about just the opportunity like what that looks like for the NFL and, and clearly it's very very hard business um, and just I would say for me it became real really after that season when I started and I and I put some game, games together that. And my brother, you know, again, has helped me since I was young and kind of spoke to me and said, hey, this this is something you want to do. You know, all you got to do is, is take that that next step, that next jump. And you can you can you can do this. This can be a reality. for you. And I, I kind of I really knew what he what he was saying now, looking back. Um, just the way the way I played, the way I viewed the game, taking that next step really like a pro put yourself already already thinking like you're already in the NFL without being there yet and so that's that becomes with a lot of preparation and a lot of just a sacrifice like putting right. putting things down putting priorities up in the game of football especially at my position it was going into my senior year um no pre you know all SEC nothing like that I actually switched positions but there's more of my, my natural position was, was at guard moved to right guard and I started putting some, put some games together and it was like halfway through the season. And before the season, I'll go back to my two roommates I had. That was, that was our goal. That's all we talked about. Like was every game, like put, put your best self out there because mm. we knew scouts were going to be there. We knew film doesn't lie. Like at the end of the day, right. that's, right. that's your resume. Right. And games go on, whatever. And it was, Towards the end of the season, I had um, a game where actually it was like after the first quarter, I think it was the second quarter, I get hurt. It was against Duke because our last home game, and my buddy comes over and says, "Yo, you you got to finish this game. Like you can't, wow. you can't. We like we need you. It was like it obviously, and it was for like the uh, Big Four championship, which is basically yeah. the state of North North Carolina, like the Big wow, Four, yeah. UNC, Duke, yeah, yeah. Big Four, <laughs> absolutely, and um." That's when that moment I come back in the game and I'm kind of a little, little banged up. I get hurt, right. my ankle like tweaked or whatever, come back in and I, I just start playing at a high level. Something, something clicked for that game, just right. play at a high level. I ended up winning ACC player, of the, or ACC O lineman of the week. Wow. And just like that's when it kind of realized I was like, yeah, I can, I can do this. Like this, this, this is good. This, this is reality for me. This, right. this is something I've always wanted to do. As a young age, obviously you're a young player, you come to college and you see the NFL and you look at those Absolutely. guys, like, they're the best players in the world. And that's something you want to do. 
and it was really my senior year. I would watch film, obviously biggest biggest critic of myself. You see, like you putting some games together that you you're you're handling your business outside of football, and the goal is attainable now. You just got right. you got to believe it. You know, absolutely. Nobody absolutely. else does it. You got to believe it. And it was it was good. Again, just surround your surrounding myself with like people that 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 was their same goal, and, and they believed in me as well. Right. <clears throat> no, absolutely, absolutely. So, what, what was what was, and that's definitely key, like you said, surrounding yourself with people that's trying yeah. to get get where you're trying to go, or even believe in what you're trying to do, and not allowing you to mess up or do anything that, and and you learn that either the good way or the bad way, you know. And it's, it's whether you got to go through it to see what's good for you was not good for you but it'd be good if you can start out that way that way you won't have to go backwards to get back forward you know so um that's definitely good like you man you're giving some great advice and you know the people that you have around you is definitely key because that's what people look at too who you hang out with who you're around who you're surrounded and that'll take you that that's going to determine how far you go so that's definitely uh good that you had that so what was what was that and i see it, everybody sees it on tv what was that nfl draft process experience workouts like for you i everybody watches on tv on espn and all the workouts yeah. and the drills so, and <laughs> exactly so for me honestly a lot of people in my class we get this it was during the covid year was was really my my wow. draft process came out and so then i wasn't a combine guy um wasn't uh wasn't a combine guy yet my point and and, and it, we ended up uh we didn't we got our pro day canceled and that really, I wouldn't say it made or break it. I wasn't going to make it break it. Like, but it obviously hurt because I, I wanted right. NFL coaches to really see me, you know, this finished product of college right. of where, where he got. And so I was training hard in Atlanta. And, and I found out as the world find, found out, like, Corona was, was, was spreading around and every pro day around the country was getting canceled. Wow. So that was a tough, tough, pro, uh, that was just a tough, low, tough process. And thankfully, you know, the draft goes on. And of course, you know, you think you might get drafted, you might not. Um, and I don't look really look into that, like, you know, oh, you're supposed to be drafted here. Like either you get either you get drafted or you don't. Right. Um, I went undrafted to the Los Angeles Chargers. There's a quick story of that. Um, I get a call call from them and like they were texting me before the draft. So, but then the Bengals called, they like offered me first they actually retracted the offer because I actually got hurt at the end of my season, senior season, my re- last regular season wow. game. I played in the bowl game. Think about this. No pro day. Nobody could see me, could work me out. So nobody really had a idea like, Oh, is he, is he healed? Like, is he healed up? And right, right, right. So I had some adversity there. And then thankfully Chargers took, took a chance and obviously, and, and things worked out well there and boom, I'm going into year three and, and now I'm with a different team, but it's, it was a tougher process. That was tougher. Just didn't have a pro day. And some, right. some guys can really separate themselves with a pro day if you didn't go to a combine. And again, my going into my senior year, I realized like film, th- this is it. Like my film is my resume. And so that'll Absolutely. never, never work. Absolutely, man. And that that's man, like you said, that is I was just talking to somebody else that that you know the NBA process. It's like the business of sports, professional sports is so there is no don't there is no guarantees in it nowhere there is no loyalty there is no nothing there is and you see it all the time and and it's, it's it's bad it's not it's it's messed up that the fans get mad at the players for wanting to leave when if the players get hurt or something happens that the team get rid of the player and now but that's okay but it's not okay for the player to want to leave it's but it's so it's such a crazy business and it's just there's no loyalty that's why it's more so exactly. get get what you can while you can type of thing yeah yeah make it make it worth it while you're there exactly so so your what was your rookie year like for you man and and i know i know about the, the how the rookies get treated man so you gotta tell, oh, tell me a little bit about that yeah <laughs> well, hey, what, what you what you want to tell me what you want of course tell of you, course <laughs> it's a it's a it's a obviously it's a it's a, a wonderful business you 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 grow close into your position rooms and stuff so i was the only rookie alignment that year for the Chargers, oh, man. didn't draft anybody. I was the only rookie alignment they kept. They kept me on practice squad. We just had a deeper, older, older room, and so, <laughs> man, I had a lot to do. Uh, just from 
you know, I had an older guy in the, in the room and he, oh, I'm dip. That's, you know, that some guys dip in the, in the O-line room. And I had to make sure I had dip on me at all times. And if I wow. didn't, it didn't go over well that day. You know, the, the vets <laughs> didn't have a good day because they right. you know, dropped the ball here. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the rookie year, rookie year, I learned a lot. Um, I was, again, a, 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 just in a great, a lot of vets were in the room. I got to learn mm. a lot um, technically, but a lot of funny rookie stories just from, from that and from just being the only rookie alignment, like, you know, you don't really have a name. Your name is rookie. And so, oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you got to get used to that. And like, right. It, and it, what it is, it's, it's, it's not, it, you're just earning your way in, you know, because right, it's such right, a special, absolutely. a special a business and special room, especially right. off the line. That's already a, a we're always so tight. We all, we all, we all work together right. uh, as one, but there was, there's this one story like, um, yeah, I'll tell that one. I'll tell that one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And, uh, it was probably, it was, in the, yeah, it was in the middle of camp and mm-hmm. one, uh, one, one player specifically, he was like a year, he's going to year 11, I think at the time uh-huh. he, I was this guy to get coffee for him for yeah. really every, every meeting. And so, which it is what it is, obviously right. part yeah. of it, but I, uh, I forgot to get his coffee for some reason. I think I had to do something that morning right before yeah. meeting. So I come in, he sees me, he's like, yo, could you go grab my coffee uh, real quick or whatever? Just he gave me the order. So I walk in and I walk in and it was like a, it was a unit meeting with the whole offense. And I walk in like a couple minutes late with coffee in my hand. Wow. And the, and the <laughs> offense coordinator was like, where have you been? And I go, I just, I stopped. I, stopped. I didn't even say anything for the first like couple seconds. And I'm, I'm looking around. Everyone's, everyone's kind of, everyone, a couple people were talking, but everyone's like, Oh no, like this is, not- <laughs> and, um, and I just had a, I didn't tell him like I was getting coffee for Brian and they put Brian on the spot, but uh, I was like, uh, I apologize, coach. I, I, yeah. yeah, You just don't want to rat out anybody. But I don't. And thankfully he didn't, you know, you know, Hey, we'll see you buddy. Appreciate, appreciate the time right, here. Right. It was just kind of like um, my, again, my eventually my position coach, uh, Brian was, the, was his name. The, the vet told, Hey, sorry about that. Like, We'll, we'll figure out next time, maybe after meetings or, or right before, because we go from offense meeting to like positional meeting. Okay. And that was just a very eye opening story, like just eye opening moment, like at the office coordinator, three minutes into the end of the unit meeting. Where have you been? And hey. I just put it on the chest and was like, sorry, sorry, I was late. I just had to get some. Hey, that, that, hey, that probably won, won you a lot of points in that locker room, man, with that vet, man, because that, that was a defining moment for you, man. That, that was a very, you could have been like, well, he told me to go get coffee for him, but that Honestly, was in a position too, you know. So that was the definer. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. I could, I, and just <laughs> that was a tough. It was just a tough moment. I, I didn't. I didn't know what right. to say for the first couple of seconds. And I eventually just was like, "I'm sorry, I'm late. It won't happen." Right. Again. Right. You know? So, so, so now that you're a few years in the, in the league now, what, what advice could you get incoming rookies that that's you know just that just got drafted? What can what 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 kind of advice? would you give to them and what to watch out for? Um, just some, so just some general advice. Um, and I won't go into too much detail. Just when you, when you get in here, like I thought the, you know, no one was there to help you. I thought like you had to figure out everything on your own and it's really not like that. And mm-hmm. maybe every, and really it's not because I'm hearing from other guys, every, every room is really the same in the sense of, if you ask a question to a vet, you know, you'll get an answer. Like they're, they're, right. here, they're there to help. You just right. gotta, that's again, going back to, you just gotta ask the questions, ask the right questions, be good at that. And, and you'll learn a lot and, and try not to try not to over, if you're an overthinker, overanalyzer, try not to overthink something. And, and if you're a rookie, like write everything down, you know, right. just take, take good notes. And also, get to know just the the older guys in the room, especially like 
if you if you go through camp and you and you're you're still with the team after camp mm -hmm. uh, as a rookie you know find out you know realize obviously who's the leader in that room find out what makes them so good why how are they still here after year seven right. year eight year nine right get the golden nuggets early so you can you can stay in the league as long as you, you, you as you can no nobody knows what that what that will look like for each person but absolutely I yeah, I, I, that's definitely great advice. Um, I was talking to one of my friends who played at Maryland. Well, he played football, but he played in the NFL for a while. And I had to ask him about the playbooks you guys get, man. He was like, man, look, them playbooks is like, and you got to know all the plays. You have to know yep. everything. And I'm like, man, look, I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, in, in basketball, we get plays at a time, like a few plays at a time. You got to remember that few, but I have actual, like, books that you have to know like yeah mm -hmm. man yeah and and uh, um we had a you have rookie meetings and, and and you and the uh they'll bring in like guys that are older guys on the team to tell you hey what was your rookie experience like and ask questions and austin eckler, eckler sat down and, and and i still remember this to this day like you know he made everything his priority was to make the team he went undrafted and wow. great, you know, he's become a great player, Austin Eckler, uh, right. and been with the Chargers for years. He he made it his total priority. He told his family because you're gonna have people pulling on you and, right. and think this this lavish lifestyle, whatever it is, what it is. You just gotta tell tell your family, hey, I'm in camp. Let me focus on trying to make the team. Whatever I have to do, go on note cards, go downstairs, work with other rookies, go through the plays, walk through whatever you are, like a visual learner, right. audio. audio you make it happen, create that reality for you that way, because for rookies, you know, do they know the place? Can they go out right. there and execute you at a high level? It's you know, Absolutely. talent's everywhere in the league. Everyone's got talent. Absolutely. It's just being able to execute the plays. And Osaka made it very clear to his people, his, everyone in his life. This was his sole focus and he was willing to do anything to, to make the team. And, and of course he did. And he's had a great career so far. I mean, that's awesome, man. I definitely, I appreciate you uh, joining the show. I know you have what you have a camp coming up in June, correct? You and your brother. Yeah, yeah, June eighteenth yes. with with my brother. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that, or for the you know the viewers, or if anybody's in you know of Tennessee course. or Knoxville that you know would like to come to the camp. Yeah, we're uh, we're doing a camp in, in in Knoxville, Tennessee, obviously, for mainly um, for ages 13, 13 through eighteen, which is basically you know if you're an eighth grader that summer going into your freshman year. Um, and then obviously all the way through high school, you know, please, please come to the camp. We're going to very, I feel like for such a position, we play offensive line, you know, there's a lot of technique to it. And mm -hmm. I just want to, from the three coaches I've, I've had two coach or this is going on my third coach in the NFL, my one coach in college and my brother, other brother playing in college, he had three or four position coaches in college. Wow. We, we just want to, we want to give some knowledge and, and to help, to help your kids and, and even help you as, as a high schooler, if, if this is, if this is seriously your goal, you know, go to, go to play college football. And we think we'd love to just help in any way we can. And we're going to make it a, a very fun day. There's some th fun things we're going to do at the, at the end after a lot of teaching is done. So it'll be fun. Man, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. How can they find that information? You had a website or how can they find that? Yeah, it's a, it's a website. I think, I think it's like ABC. I can actually Make sure I get that because I want to. Yeah. It is. It's abcsports.org slash Gillum Brother Camp. Um, and on that okay. website is how you register. And, and we'd love to have anyone out. And, and it's the first first year we're doing it. So we're, we're excited to, to get back to home, hometown and just teach as much as we can. So and That's awesome, man. That's, that's awesome. I definitely appreciate you joining the show. I definitely appreciate all the advice that you were given and talk about your experiences because just never know who's listening, who's watching. That was, you know, you didn't help just now. Um, <clears throat> definitely good luck to you the rest of your career. I'm definitely going to be keeping in touch and watching and may yeah. actually get down to Tennessee myself to, to, to <laughs> check out some things, man. So, Absolutely. you know, we could definitely connect. So I definitely appreciate you joining the Crossover Talk Show. Uh, NFL Proler, uh, Nate Gillum joining the show. And I, like I said, I definitely appreciate your time. And I know you got to get going with your day. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate it a lot. I right, have a good one.